Hi, welcome back to Cat Asylum Park, and we're back inside today in the Cooper Environmental Center. My name is Nikki Vernaccio, one of the senior park naturalists here, and today I wanted to showcase two of my amazing creatures that we have here at the Nature Center, our common snapping turtles. Now soon we're going to start seeing snapping turtles on our trails, um, more common now because they're going to be starting to come out to find nesting sites to lay their eggs. So check out this guy here, this girl I should say. This is Bruno and Bruno is a common snapping turtle. Now snapping turtles have these great characteristics. I know many people see turtles out in the wild, particularly if they're in a pond or a lake, and the first thing they say is, oh that's a snapper. That's a snapping turtle for sure. Well, let me give you some clues to help you maybe identify what an actual snapping turtle is. One is this long neck. Do you see her stretching out her neck? Her neck is really, really long. And if she wanted to, she could come all the way around and go for a snap way back here. So she's not even extending her neck just as far out as really she can go. She's also a turtle that's not going to go out on a, a pond or lake and bask in the sun. They're not going to sit, come out and sit on a rock or a log and sun themselves. They really stay down deep in a pond or lake, down on the bottom where it's muddy and gloomy and dark, and they really kind of prefer it darker. They're a little bit more of a nocturnal type of turtle. And another great characteristic of snapping turtles is their tail. Let's see if she'll share her tail with us. She's going to wiggle, wiggle. Look how long that tail is. That tail is just about as long as the top of her shell is. So that's how you can tell that you're looking at a snapping turtle. They have one of the longest tails in the turtle world. Now about that snap, that's all about their bite. They have extremely strong, powerful muscles actually all around their body, but particularly in their jaws. They're very quick and they want to, I want to say they have a temperament that's kind of mean. Now, they're not trying to be mean on purpose. They actually kind of have a reason or an adaptation to being a little bit more aggressive than another turtle, like maybe a painted turtle or a diamondback terrapin. Well, on top they have this top shell called the carapace. But underneath, let's see if she'll show you. See her shell underneath? She has a plastron, but it's actually very skinny. She's posing so nicely. So it's exposing all this tissue, all this muscle. Sometimes she even has a muffin top when she gets a little chunky. But all this skin here is exposed, making her very, very vulnerable to predators that might come and eat her. So snapping turtles do have this very tiny shell on the bottom. So that's why they have the disposition to being a little bit more aggressive, to really help to protect themselves and to keep themselves safe. Now, a little bit about Bruno herself. She's a little bit of a diva, a little bit of a princess. Um, like many of our turtles here at the Nature Center, uh, she was brought to us as a young turtle who was someone's pet. Now, she was a pet for someone for about two years, which was just enough to cause her not to be released back out into the wild because she really hadn't learned how to catch her own food. And we also realized with Bruno that she's a little bit different than maybe a common snapping turtle would be, but she's definitely a blessing to us. She's very small. So believe it or not, Bruno is 17 years old, but I can hold her in one hand as you can see. She grows very, very slowly. So she's an extremely small variety of a snapping turtle. And she could not also be a snapping turtle that may not have made it in the wilds with her characteristics. She could have been very tiny for a long time, which would have added to her being prey for other animals like maybe raccoons or foxes. But she's definitely a blessing to us here at the Nature Center because we can use her for school groups. She's an animal ambassador. We can take her out to classes and to camps and things. And not many people get to say that they can see a snapping turtle right up close. And she has a pretty good disposition too. I think she likes the camera, to be honest with you. She is our little diva. You may also notice that her shell is a kind of an odd shape. It's concave. OK? 
Okay? So this has been starting to go concave, I'd say about eight years ago, we started to notice. Um, she was growing a little bit more and it was kind of growing a little funky. Um, and this is a condition that can happen in snapping turtles. So she has been to the vet, like all of our animals have been. She has a clean bill of health and we just love to, you know, keep her happy. She loves to eat, she loves her food, loves walking around, and uh, she loves looking at all of you. So like I said, she's a great ambassador for us because we would never be able to take a full-size snapping turtle out to a classroom, that's for sure. Okay, let me show you one of our other friends. Let me put Bruno back in to make sure she doesn't go wandering off on me. I think she really enjoyed her spotlight, that's for sure. This is a little container that we use particularly when we're doing classes here at the Nature Center. Um, we'll have a turtle or a snake in this little container that they're in temporarily till we do the classes and we put them back in their own tanks or in their exhibits, but keeps them safe and secure for a little bit. So come down here, I want you to check out this guy. Now he's quite a different size than Bruno. This is Jabba. And Jabba is actually a full grown snapping turtle. Now I'm gonna use gloves to move Jabba because like many turtles, they do have very long claws. They have a little bit of webbing on their feet to help them to swim but their claws are pretty long and very, very sharp. And snapping turtles, like I mentioned, are extremely strong, solid animals. So I do like to use gloves so he doesn't kind of rip my hands up. And I'm gonna put him down here and we're gonna see what he does today. I just kind of like to show how he is because he's such a gorgeous creature. Doesn't he look like a dinosaur? I mean, if we could get up close to a dinosaur, I think this is what one would look like. He has the best face, almost looks like a little grumpy Gus there. But Jabba has us this great personality. He's also a turtle that was someone's pet for many years. So he's actually a very, what I'd call, laid back snapping turtle. He says, what is that light? I'm not sure what that is. Um, as snapping turtles, he might just hang out here or he might walk around. But look at his neck. Do you see how his neck goes inside? That's where you get the term turtle. If you've ever heard of one of those turtlenecks before, that's where you get that phrase from. And look at Jabba's muffin top. Look at all that. Let's see if you'll let me touch him. Look at all this flesh that's hanging out there. That's all that's exposed. He doesn't have a big shell like a box turtle to protect himself. And again, that's where they get that little more aggression to them. Now, before we go any further with Jabba, I want to ask you a question. I want to do a little contest while we're here today. Um, in fact, this week, we had a contest with our staff. Now, our staff are not all back into the Nature Center, and uh, we are a great team of people. Um, so we tried a fun game this week, and we group texted. And I said, you know what, I'm going to weigh Jabba today. How about we guess and see how much Jabba weighs? Now, I'll give you a couple of clues. Here's my hand. Um, you can see he's about the size, I would say, of a dinner plate. Um, I definitely need two hands to pick him up. I can't pick him up with one hand like Bruno. Um, you can see how much skin and muscle that he has there. Um, when we do put him into his exhibit, his exhibit is about six feet off the ground, so we have to climb up a ladder holding Jabba, and one of our staff members had a great description of carrying Jabba. It's like carrying or juggling two watermelons up a ladder. So I brought in my scale and I had the staff guess, how much does Jabba weigh? So I want to do that right now on Facebook Live. So if you can put in your comments, give me your guesses as to how much you think Jabba weighs. At the end of Facebook Live, I'm going to announce his weight and then I'll uh, private message you your address for maybe a Catasalon souvenir. Um, so like I said, put in your guesses in the comments. Um, you could go pounds or kilograms, because I know we have some international viewers, and I did the conversion. And let me know what you think uh, his weight would be. Now, Jabba or snapping turtles are going to be out and about very, very soon here in New, in New Jersey to go out and lay eggs. Now, Jabba is a male snapping turtle. Uh, Bruno is a female, 
But Bruno, I don't think, if she was in the wild, would be able to reproduce based on her size. So it actually determines their size. They need to be at least eight inches uh, to be able to reproduce or lay eggs. So if Jabba was a, a female, he would be <laughs> out and about walking around and starting to looking for a nesting place to lay. So these turtles might show up in your backyard and you're thinking, what in the world is this dinosaur looking creature doing there? Um, they're looking for a great nesting site and they will walk long, long distances to find just the right site. And they also might dig several different nesting sites. They're trying it out. They're just trying to find the right soil, right spot. They're thinking about predators. So they might make three to four to five different practice nest sites. So the females will dig a hole once they find a nice spot. And then they're going to deposit or lay about 20 to 30 ping pong shaped eggs, which I think is so cool. Um, we have some really cool pictures of those eggs. And they're going to lay them and cover them up. And they're going to make their way back into the swamps or ponds or lakes that they came from. Now they're laying about 20 to 30 eggs, but the chances of all of those hatching are definitely very, very slim. Sapping turtle eggs are a great food source for many animals like fox and raccoons that actually can smell out those eggs. So hopefully maybe one, maybe two of those eggs would hatch out to a successful uh, snapping turtle, which turns out to be this little person, little person, little guy, about the size of a quarter, which will find its way back to that water area. So as I said, this time of year is the time that we start to see snapping turtles moving around a lot more at the park. Now that kind of brings me to what do you do if you see a snapping turtle? Well, I would like to say just kind of keep your distance for sure. I mean, I'm extremely close to Jabba right now. And our producer, Tom, is really close with his camera as well. But Java doesn't seem to mind. And like I said, he really is a laid back snapping turtle. He could easily lunge, even though he looks very, very heavy. He could lunge, almost jump, about three feet forward. And that neck that's all scrunched up right now could really stretch out far. So they look like they're very slow going turtles, but they actually can be very, very quick. So if you do find a snapping turtle, you know, my suggestion is to leave it alone. It's going to move on. Um, oftentimes here at the Nature Center, we find the snapping turtles in not very safe places, like in a whole parking lot spot or in the entrance to the parking lot, um, where we kind of need to do something to move them out of their way. So we do move them in the direction that they're going. You never kind of want to move a turtle the other way, because guess what? They're going to go back that way anyway. That's where they're heading. Um, he's starting to move a little bit now. Um, and kind of maybe just kind of coax them. Sometimes a snow shovel is a great way to kind of get underneath them a little bit and have them move up a little bit. Um, they're also very good at turning and spinning. So even though you think you're behind them, uh, they can turn around very, very quickly. So I don't recommend trying to touch them or move them in any way, shape, or form. Um, I know there's many pictures online of um, people holding these massive turtles and holding the turtles particularly by their tails. Okay, their tails are part of their backbone or part of their spine. You wouldn't want to be held up by your backbone or spine. Um, that really can do quite the injury and damage to the turtle. Um, so I don't, we don't recommend that whatsoever to ever touch the turtle or hold it by its tail, that's for sure. Like I said, if it's in a position where it needs to be moved, I would say a shovel and kind of coaxing it, um, kind of like a wheelbarrow along, is the best way to kind of move them through. Now, snapping turtles, their numbers are actually doing quite well here in New Jersey and North America. They're primarily a North American species. Um, I don't seem to see any that are found in Europe or Asia. There's some down in Central America. And their numbers are doing quite well. So there's actually a harvest season and a time where you can harvest a snapping turtle and they can be used for food. So if you've ever heard of snapper soup or a snapper stew here in the Pine Barrens, that's something that could be on a menu a um, hundred years ago and maybe a tavern. Um, so snapping turtle is a big food source for many of the local people that are here. So their numbers are going, doing quite well compared to some of the other turtles that we've talked about um, in the past. 
Now, I also want to talk a little bit about a snapping turtle that's called an alligator snapping turtle, because many people kind of confuse those with uh, these common guys. And common snapping turtles have a much smoother shell, if you can believe it. It does look kind of bumpy, but the alligator ones, he's going to wiggle and squiggle as I touch them, have really big spikes that come out of their shell. Okay. And alligator snapping turtles live primarily in the central southern part of the United States, so around Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi, that type of range there. So we don't see um, alligator snapping turtles here in New Jersey. Um, so if you ever do see a snapping turtle, nine times out of ten, it's going to be your common snapping turtle around here in New Jersey. So, Okay, well let me get to my uh, answer to our question about how much does Java weigh. Um, I want to tell you that um, our whole staff were completely stumped, including myself, as to how much he weighed. Um, I think our highest guess of one of the staff members was 18 pounds. And our uh, lightest guess was 9 pounds. And when I did weigh him, I weighed him a couple of times, because I'm a scientist, so you weigh him, make sure. I did a couple of different ways to weigh him. And Java weighs eight pounds. Eight pounds of solid snapping turtle, which is about three and a half kilos. Uh, so if you were near that number, congratulations. I'm going to check out the comments later. And just to be fair, I cannot see, as we're doing live, any of your comments. Um, so I can't pick and choose who I think would have been the winner, um, because I can't see them. So I will answer your questions. If you have any questions on our snapping turtles, um, like I said, this is Jabba. Um, Jabba also was a pet, like I had mentioned, and he's six years old. Um, so he does still have, you know, they can live 40 to 50 years, if not more. Um, he's a great animal ambassador for us. He's a little hard to take to classes and such, but he's a great animal to have on display here uh, for people to check out and see and I really appreciate um, what these turtles are. So, well, thank you for joining. Uh, me and Jabba and Bruno today. Um, we can't wait to uh, see you and talk to you again. And thanks for joining us. My name is Nikki Vernaccio from Caddis Island County Park and the Cooper Environmental Center. You guys have a great day today. Take care.